All right, and welcome back to the shop. Today, we're going to be making a little grappling hook out of some salvaged material and some hardware, like this quarter-inch by 20 screw nut and bolt, I should say, and these salvaged components from these carpet racks. And I'm going to use this for some upcoming projects. But these pieces were spare. I had no use for them. So I said, hey, they're about the size I need to make a small grappling hook. So I'm going to have them thread on from the bottom today. I have another version that I'm going to insert a photo of here um, that threaded all the way from the top, but you had to take the paracord or eyelet off of the top. I'm going to measure them so they're about three-quarter inch, half inch, somewhere in there, and then I'm going to trim these down with a hacksaw. Uh, and I'm also going to take three sides of this nut off, so I have somewhere to attach these once I get going. I'm just going to take off three sides of this where that flange comes out. Here we go. We're going to just grind off one side here, flip it around, pinch it back in those vice grips. Get them all flat. I'm leaving some of the flange around the other edges because I think it'll just give me some more metal to weld to. And, uh, oh, no, no logos here. We're gonna, this is just a handy tip to keep water in the shop because I'm always needing some water. And this way you can kind of dispense it and uh, get it out of the way. And there you go, cool off that nut. There you go. So, there you got it. Yeah, yeah. See? There you have it. Now what we're going to do is uh, get the other pieces taken apart. And they have these little rivets on the bottom. So I'm just taking them apart, disassembling the components. Use the hacksaw here to just sort of get them to the length I need. And then... It's two. We only need three of them, so we're going to go ahead and cut up the other one for good measure. And there's the pieces that you need. We're going to go ahead and get them all the same size now. I use this uh, piece of wood and everything to keep it square. Just mark it with a sharpie there. Made the marks a little extra fat so I can have some room to play. I'm pinching them in the vise using the edge of the vise as a guide to start and to keep the cut square here. There's number two. I'm cut the last one there. Yep. There you go. So now what we're going to do is uh, get this thing trimmed down a little bit. There's that flange that rolls around there. We're going to forge this, but I don't want all of that little uh, brim that's sticking out there. So we're going to go ahead and take that off. There we go. On the grinder. Just get most of that gone. We're gonna smush this part flat anyways. And here's the anvil. I'm putting this spare sacrificial nut on the bottom that had some glue in it. Uh, but I'm just using that to pinch so I don't mess up the threads while I heat this and pound on it with the hammer. Here you go with the map gas torch. You're gonna get this thing red hot to the point where it's, well, orange, not red really, orange hot, super hot. And then once you get this uh, good to go, you can just go ahead and whack it with the hammer a few times. Now we're starting to see the color we want. Bam, bam. We're flattening it out. We're going to try to make it the same width as the shaft of the screw here. There you go. It's getting there. We'll do it one more time. Let's heat it up one more time. Just for good measure, make sure it's good and flat and nice surface area to work with there. Just getting any of the hammer marks out, those last taps. Now you see we have a nice flat area that we can use to start drilling. We should probably go ahead and cool it. This is where it hardens again uh, because you're putting in it, you're basically quenching, you're hardening it. So um, it's going to be a little bit rough to work with right now as it stands, and you're going to see in one second here. Um, but the other pieces are cut. We're going to clean up the ends of these and get them ready to weld on there. So everything is square, flush, and then hit it with the deburring tool just to clean it up and make it nice and clean, nice and shiny. Yeah, it looks Those nice. Look pretty, though. Do a couple of these. Just clean them up. Buff them out. You know the drill. 
That looks fantastic. All right, we've got our three parts. And now I'm just, um, I'm gonna be getting very frustrated. You'll see in a second here. I'm trying to position these things and keep them square. I usually use my one, two, three blocks, but I thought, oh, maybe these will be good because I can hold them. Nope, let's try the one, two, three blocks because there's wobble. I'm not having it, I'm not having it, I'm not happy with that. One, two, three blocks are good, but it doesn't hold the position. Things can still shift in and out. So I figured, oh, well, I'll hold it in place with this. Use the vice grips to push the nut into the screw here, into the bolt. Whatever. Just fiddling with it. Getting more and more irritated. You can see this is this is sped up too. It was like a lot of finagling. Oh, did we get one to take? All right, looks like we got one to take. So that one's over there. Again, this is just a tiny spot weld to hold it in place because I'm going to weld this all again once it's there. Um, Number three. And I have a screw in it, so I have a way to spin it on. And I just dropped it through the table. Great. And it broke because it hit the floor and it was just a tiny little tack. Holy So we're going to redo that part again. Fantastic. I love doing things a bunch of times. This is going to illustrate my point for why I need a third hand, though. Oh, my. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what, why this is such a pain. Just because stuff moves. I'm going to build a third hand. That's an upcoming video. That's good because I'm going to be frustrated while I'm talking about it too. Basically, this is just getting really annoying. I figure maybe if I put the clamp, the ground, directly on the vice grips, uh, it will give me more current directly. You know, I'm just trying anything. I'm like, maybe. It seems like I've been welding for about 15 minutes and I'm right where I started, so. You know how this goes. See, if I didn't have this problem, things are moving. If I had that third hand, this would not even be happening twice. I'm just showing this because it is real. The struggle is real, people. There's two, right? I got two pieces together. That's fantastic. One more. If I had a third hand, this would really help. Look at all this finagling. It's hard to watch. This is not how you do it. This is the opposite of how you would do it. Yeah. Now I figure, oh, I'll just put the vice grips down on top of this piece. Holy f dude. Where should I put the yeah, let, no. Put the, yeah, let's put those on top. Maybe that'll wait. Oh. Do we finally have three pieces attached? Okay. Let's test this. Now the heat's probably affected the metal a little bit, and I'm finding that out. It's, eh, it spins sort of. It's not as loose as I'd like it, but we will deal with that. Now we're just going to put it on a screw that we are not going to need, and I'm just using that to keep everything out of the hole of the nut there. Um, so when I weld, I don't get any crap in there. And it gives me a nice working place because I can clamp it in and attach the, the clamp of the ground to it and everything. So Basically just going around all the sides, hitting up, clean up any welds so you can see what you got. Looks pretty good. And let's see what the bottom side looks like. Yep, still kind of crunchy, but kind of it'll work. Now we're going to go ahead and try to deal with this. As you remember, see, so yeah. It's hardened because I threw it directly in the water. Um, so what we're going to do now is anneal it. We're going we're gonna to soften the metal again. We're going to get it orange. And then we're going to uh, just go ahead and, and deal with it, but not quench it. So... Now you'll see, I just have a regular spring type punch and boom, goes right into that metal like like butter. No problem, there you can see the divot. We did not get that on the first time. So now we've got that, I'm gonna start the hole here over the anvil. And I thought, oh, why am I doing this? Let's put it in the vise. Now it's in the vise, a little oil in there to keep it cool. High speed on the drill, moderate pressure. A little bit, a little bit of patience. Get through this. This is real time. More oil for good measure. And just 
Just ream it out a little bit, smooth out the edges. Good, let's cool it off again now. Take a look at the two components. Looks pretty good. Let's clean this up a little bit on the grinder, make it prettier. Test fit the prongs there. You can see it's pretty snug. I'm showing this just to, to illustrate what can happen because it does get hot and the heat expands and you know it does things so I'm kind of in between the two parts I'm, I'm thinking about cleaning up that part I'm also gonna open up those threads so that moves super smooth uh, but first I'm gonna touch this up with the grinder kind of work in tandem on the two parts so they come along together it's looking nice it's looking almost professional looking there uh, that finish is gonna be nice and I'm leaving the details of the heads of the bolt in there as well because it shows a little bit of the history of where it came from. I could grind it all down and polish it, but I like to have some character. Let me just hit up the other sides of those welds, make them a little bit prettier. Then hit it with the deburring tool again just to kind of polish it and get all those tool marks out of there. Any spray, overspray from the welds. And now I'm just trying to round out the feet just a little bit so they're not so square. Hitting the edges. Perfect. Now I'm testing to make sure it sits flush, and it does. Once again on the deburring tool, you can see that it actually makes them nice and shiny versus where it was. There you go, that top one there. Nice and smooth. Looks pretty good. Now, you can see it's a little bit firm. It's a little bit tough to get this on and off. So the solution to that is a quarter inch tap. Be gentle with this, but put it in there. And this is just going to clean out those threads again and make sure they're the right size to fit the screw. There you have it. See, look at that. Now you can see Perfect. That's the action we want. There you have it. So now we're just going to fit the actual piece to the actual piece. Look at that action. That looks awesome. And it looks really nice. The only thing left to do is put a taper on the end of this so it's pointy. Um, I will probably do that part off camera since I didn't film it yesterday. And then I will do an update. I will come right back to show you the product uh, in my hand completed. Uh, with all the final details and cleanup, but there you go. That's the idea of it. I think it came out pretty good for a second try for the mini a uh, couple design improvements simplification, that. but look at that. Wow, that is nice both sides bam boom Thank you. I Like it too awesome All right, and here we have the finished product. I'm ordering some smaller rings these are a little bit big for my taste for the size of this but um, the paracord alone will fit through this hole so the pair this hole will fit paracord alone you do not need the key ring but here it is here's the top and and bottom I guess you could say the the one part a and part B um, I tapered down the tip so it's nice and pointy this actually has fantastic action now once you get that started Works fantastic if you spin back. It'll just helicopter on the top of it. It works fantastic, so that's pretty much, that's all you need. Boom. One shot and it's off. So, a nut and a bolt and uh, some extra rod. That was today's fun project build. This is what we ended up with on this one. Um, I, in the next video, will be making a third hand, um, basically a way to hold all of these components together so I can have one hand holding this and then the other holding the nut. So welding will be much easier without having to uh, do what I, you know, go through what I went through uh, the first couple times with this. Anyways, once again, thanks for watching. I appreciate all the new subscriptions. Uh, I love to hear from you guys. I love the comments down below. Join in on the conversation. If you've got some ideas or some other things you'd like to see, please let me know. Check me out on Facebook at Too Many Morons and uh, on Instagram at Flea9, F-L-E-A-N-I-N-E. And uh, check out some of the project builds there before I actually post videos. 
Um, she's done. <laughs>